Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and at long last I have finally completed the enclosure for the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M 3D printer. And I use the official Flash Forge DIY enclosure kit that you can find on Amazon. The normal price is $40, but if you're lucky enough to snag one during the Prime Day sales, you could have gotten it for $31.99. So that's what I opted to do. I got it in on a Saturday, put it all together on Saturday, and now I'm gonna tell you what the experience is like if you decide to get an enclosure kit and put it together yourself then I'm also going to show you the first two ASA filament tests that I did inside of this printer you probably see the ASA right there on top I'm using in lens ASA filament it's like the sparkly green color and it's been very very good for me when I printed it in the 5m pro but stick around and you'll be able to see how it's treated me so far in the 5m with the enclosure now, as far as the pieces that you need to print, they are going to include these four big thick pieces on top that snap together. They are going to take the longest to print and use the most materials. You'll also need to print out eight guards total. Those are these pieces that go on the side of the printer in the front. And then there's also going to be two more sides on the back. And you also need to do the filament spool holder right here, as well as these little circular pieces that are on the top of the side plates that you put magnets into to affix it to the frame, as well as the hinges and the handles for the door. This piece up here is not a part of the, of a, of the kit. It's just something else that uh, I'm gonna leave a link to in the description. It just covers the screen. It's an aesthetic piece. It's not a part of the enclosure kit, but it still works with it. As well as this little yellow guard handle piece that's on my bed. That's also a part of this snap-on customization. So you'll see links to those in the description as well, but they are not necessary for this. So let me tell you what the experience was like for me putting this whole thing together. And I didn't record myself doing this because I wanted to take my time, make sure I had everything as proper as I possibly could. But I'll tell you what the experience was like. Now, um, since you're dealing with 3D printed parts, there might be some situations where some things don't quite go together the way that you expect them to, or they don't go together as smoothly as you would expect them to. Everyone's experience is going to be different because different printers can be tuned in different ways, and it's just not going to be the same for everybody but I will say that when you're putting on the guard pieces one thing that I found to be helpful is when the first thing that you do is you have to remove a couple of the screws that's already attached to the printer first before you insert the first guard plate on and then you can put those screws back in and then use some of the supplied screws from the enclosure kit to fill in the rest of the holes so here's a tip might help you out I know it helped me out and it had to do with putting the screws into the guard pieces now you got to be careful make sure you read the instructions because it'll tell you for certain sides which screws you have to take out so sometimes you'll have to remove like the first two screws and then those are going to be placed back in once you attach the guard but it's not like that for all four corners some corners only have you remove one screw instead of two so you have to make sure you read the instructions so you can know exactly what you need to remove and then when you go to put that same screw back in I think it's a good idea because it helped me out to first put in the screws that have the Phillips head on it that comes with the enclosure kit, attach those first, and then at the very end, reattach the hex head screws that the printer already comes with. I found that when I did that, I had far less trouble with some screws not being aligned properly. I, I don't know the science behind it. It's just something that I ran into. So basically, if the screws came with the printer, leave those for last and then put the ones that came with the enclosure kit in first and that should help to line things up a little bit better. At least it did for me. I also found that these four pieces on top were kind of rough to push together. Um, so what I had to do was just line them up and then I had to just push it in and just kind of wiggle it, you know, kind of like that in order to just smash them together. So as much as I would have loved it to just be a nice smooth snap, it wasn't like that for me. I definitely had to put some elbow grease into it, but once they are together, they are together. They are not coming apart at all. And uh, yeah, so just kind of be on the lookout for that. 
Um, also, you're going to get magnets that come along with this. So make sure that you have yourself some glue of some kind so that you can affix those magnets to the proper places for like the door handles and things like that. And then also when you follow the instructions, when you get to the part where you put in the door, your screen is still going to be attached. So when you go to close the door, you might see that the door is clipping the screen, almost like the door is up a little bit too high. That's kind of what I experienced, but it, it goes away when you actually finish the build because the screen is going to be moved. So if that happens to you, don't worry about it. Just keep going. And by the time you get to the part where you put on this top piece and you attach the screen to there, then the door is not going to be in the way anymore. So you see, I can open this up and it's not affecting the door at all. But one thing that I do like about this door is that I can just kind of open it and it just kind of stays in the different positions in which I open it instead of just kind of flopping around back and forth. So I do like that about the door. The, the lid on top is not on a hinge. It just comes off, you know, and you'll have to just put this off to the side. If you're going to be printing something like PLA, for example, that tends to not like a bunch of heat in an enclosure, if it's not vented properly. So you'll have to, um, take this off and put this somewhere and there may even be a piece that you can print out so that you can have like a top holder or something I haven't found anything like that yet, but there may be something like that in existence I think that patience is going to be the key to putting this whole thing together the instructions that come with the enclosure kit They're 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 decent um, But you can also check out the official flash forge video about the enclosure about them putting it together That I'll link to in the description and between the instructions and that video then you should be able to put this uh, thing together um, They're not exactly the same, but I would say they're like 96% the same instructions so between those two resources, I think that you should be good. But now let's talk about printing ASA in here because with ASA, it's recommended that you use an enclosure to keep the heat in. And that's exactly what I did. I got a couple things here that I want to show you. So because ASA has a pretty good resistance to heat, I thought I would print out some things that uh, could work good in the heat. So one of the things that I printed was this. Now this is something that is something that you can clip on your backpack and then the other side is going to clip to your hat. So if you were like camping or something and you're wearing a hat, you want to take your hat off, you can just leave it attached to the backpack so that you don't have to like carry it or putting it down on the ground or something like that. So the way that this works is you take the clip and then you just hook it to the backpack like this and then you take your hat and then you can take your hat and just move that down through the second clip, you know, just like this. So if you're wearing it and you're walking around, then you got your hat attached to your backpack, just like that. And I thought that that would be a pretty uh, helpful thing for someone if they're doing some stuff outdoors and you don't want to carry your hat. And this other piece is an alternative to a carabiner clip. This one has the smooth texture, but the creator also had some more rugged texture, something to give you a little bit better grip. And then it comes in two pieces. You put them together and then you slide whatever it is you want to slide in between here. And then you can just slide it closed and then it'll be nice and tight. So you can get some ropes, some bungee cord, something like that, attach them, oh, attach them to this, and then you'll be able to uh, have a nice strong clip. And this is made out of ASA. With temperatures of 260 degrees at the hot end and 105 degrees Celsius on the bed, those are the temperatures that I use. You'll be able to see it in action right now. And I was able to print these and I didn't have any trouble printing these. Now, as far as the smell goes, I did do it in a more ventilated space outside of the house because when it comes to things like ABS and ASA, they can give off fumes that aren't so great to breathe in. This Inland ASA, I honestly don't really smell it too much. I smell a little bit more with this than I did with the 5M Pro, but again, in this space, it's ventilated enough, so it's not very strong. It'd probably be different if I was trying to do this in a smaller spot, but anyway, it, it just worked out just fine. Haven't had any problems with it. I made sure that I dried it before I used it, 
And just based on these two uh, things that I printed, they printed successfully, didn't have any failure. So I would say it's doing what it's supposed to do, this enclosure. But this is just the beginning. I am going to try some other stuff in here as well to see if I can print those things successfully or not with this enclosure. But it is definitely something that will give you more versatility out of the printer compared to the regular skeleton 5M. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a project that if you are into like tinkering or customizing your stuff and making it your own, then yeah, you should definitely get yourselves a few rolls of filament and give it a shot. It might take you a little bit of time to put it all together, you know, but if you want your printer to be something that is undeniably you, then it is definitely one of the best ways to showcase that. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe because I always have more coming down the line. So till then, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.